I think women are afraid sometimes, especially in a male-dominated you know, workforce, to speak up, but I think it's important that we do. Never, ever let fear get in the way of the dynamic person that you want to be and to just go after it and believe in yourself. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Paul Tully. New episode, FYI Podcast, Finding Your Inspiration, where we find our inspiration and we follow it. Today, we got an incredible guest. Okay, uh, and when I mean incredible, I mean because this guest wears many hats. U.S. veteran, model, actress, humanist. <laughs> we talked about a few things. Okay, this is Manda May Amory. Did I pronounce that right? I butchered names. Close enough. Emery, Emery. Emery. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. And, uh, I do remember, I just recall us meeting in person. I did not know at the time that you wrote and direct, directed the, the film I was going to the screening for at Burbank ah. Film Fest. And then when I saw you, I was like, wait, I follow him. Wow, <laughs> this is amazing. And then, so we met and... I just remember I, when I followed you, I was watching your stories. And I'm like, again, I didn't know you, but it was always something inspirational, something that's like, you know, just trying to make the world better, share positive things. And I was just like, oh, I, I really like this guy. Like, <laughs> like, he's awesome. So, you know, just meeting in person was really cool. And then obviously now we're able to actually have more of a conversation. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, um, you're from Hawaii. I am from Hawaii. All yes. right. What was yes. it like growing up over there? <sighs> Total paradise. Oh. I just felt really a lot of gratitude for growing up there and just being in a place with such sacred uh, land and people and uh, community. Let's talk about uh, um, inspiration in the sense of you're a veteran. So you leave Hawaii. You When did you become a U.S. Coast Guard? I joined in... 2009 wow yeah and i served uh for six years so wow. i learned a lot um experienced a lot i was a photojournalist um so it was really cool to um feel like i could uh serve my country and and, and um be kind of in like a humanitarian based service which is the thing that's different about the coast guard mm. and then also be creative at the same time so right. um yeah i really loved it and uh i learned a lot i learned a lot <laughs> what was it like serving in the coast guard i mean what what i mean you yeah, obviously you're fit and um what was the fitness levels like like being out there i think for me i grew up as an athlete as well like i i was a competitive swimmer and um I ran track and played soccer and all this kind of stuff. So fitness has always been a huge part of my life and like a very stabling kind of force in my life, um, as well as, you know, creativity and things like that, almost like a cathartic type of thing. Mm. Um, so just, um, it's more natural to me, you know, to yeah. want to move and to uh, work out. So like going into the military, it wasn't that much of a difference for me. Um, but once I joined, I just kind of kept training, kept working out. Dude, this gets me super inspired, like just listening to you talk. And, and um, I, I mean, coincidentally, today is International Woman's Day, hey. correct? This shout is, out to all the beautiful, strong women out there. Shout out to the women. Mom, shout out to you, strongest woman I know. Um, I believe you said your father was a Marine. Yeah. My dad serving. Um, I felt almost like an obligation to to serve my country because I, I still I always had in mind in the vision that I knew I wanted to have a creative path. Mm. And so even when I was in service, I had a creative field that I was in that I chose to be in. But I always had that vision long term. And I almost felt like it can seem a little egoic sometimes, like pursuing acting and wanting yeah. to kind of be in the front of the camera. And if you're getting called for that and in some weird way, I felt like I really wanted to you know, give back and, and as much as I could before I, like, did something that seemed a little bit more, like, putting myself, you know, mm -hmm. um, first, which I don't know if that's, like, maybe just comes from, like, a, you know, trauma type of issue, you know what I mean? But <laughs> What kind of obstacles have you had to overcome as far as um, being a woman and, and, and being, a, you know, being in the military? And what was it like? Did you have support? Were there obstacles? Did you have to 
any specific things you had to kind of over excel in or? I think in anything that you have a majority male, um, you're going to have some misogynistic things come up. You're going to, you know, they kind of hear like locker room talk and things like that. Um, I definitely did experience some of that. Um, I think growing up with a father that was a Marine kind of, uh, I had a toughness to me because of that. I wasn't afraid to speak up, basically, is yeah. what I'm saying. So if I, if I felt like someone was being inappropriate, um, I would say something. I think women are afraid sometimes, especially in a male-dominated you know, workforce, to speak up. But I think it's important that we do. And we use our voice and it matters and it's exposed, you know, yeah. when you expose something, it's like, oh, wow, okay, I, I, I'm aware of this and maybe this is inappropriate, I shouldn't be talking like this or, you know, there's a lot of other scenarios involved with that, but yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Do you think that uh, things are changing for the better? I think the movement of just speaking out and talking about situations and, and shedding light, I think that inherently can can change things because it's acknowledging that this is going on and that and then there has to be some type of accountability for mm. that. So um, I, I do, I'm, I'm a very positive person, you know, I'm, so I do believe uh, I have hope and faith in, in humanity and people. And as much as there's craziness going on, um, I think that we can change for the better. And I, I, think, I think we're on the way to that, yeah. Let's talk about a little more current, man, fitness. Fitness motivation. Fitness is truly a lifestyle. Like it, it has to really be um, just kind of like a habit that is just, it's like brushing your teeth, you know, like, yeah. and it's, it's such a mental health thing for me personally, but that part. it's, it's incredibly necessary for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, but to touch on that, yeah, the food is, it's, it's difficult as well. That mm. I have, a, I have a hard time with that too. I think, I think we all do. I think we all do. I love that you just mentioned the mental health part. Um, obviously I just went through, uh, you know, for me, uh, a tragedy with losing, uh, losing my dog and, um, <laughs> and, uh, rest in peace, Lady Liberty. Yeah. Lady Liberty. We love you, Lady love Liberty. You, baby girl. We love um, you, Stella, my girl. <laughs> but shout out to Stella. They're both playing and watching us. Um, I never knew how difficult it would be, and but I was like struggling like really hard, right? So this was just two weeks ago, and like the whole week following it, I was just like didn't work out, ate really bad, like comfort food, mm -hmm. and um, uh, then it hit me one day, like, like, well for me, I I'll be honest, and I don't know if I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy and schizophrenic, I don't know, but like. I'll be honest, lady, lady talked to me. Absolutely. You know, and she was like, let's go. Like, Absolutely. I'm good. I'm here with you still. Absolutely. And I don't, I just thought of it that day and was mm -hmm. like, dude, should train with me. And um, the mental health aspect, I was depressed. I was like, really just like crying and feeling like, man, dude, like I, Especially the little things like when I get out of the shower, she would always be waiting yeah. on the, uh, you know, on the carpet, mm -hmm. like, you know, where you get out. So I still go to get out and I wait. I don't want to step on her. And it's like, you know, so those things would like hit me waking up in the oh, morning yeah. and she's not next to me. So then it hit me like, dude, go to the gym. You're not going to feel any better. Yeah. Nothing's going to get better by eating like crap, yeah. by not working out. I literally went, the depression's not going to get better. If you go to the gym, it's going to help you feel better. You're going to feel more confident about yourself. And uh, boom, I've been back in the gym consistent, back on my meal preps. And uh, Lady Liberty works out with me, runs Absolutely. with me, Absolutely. you know. So... Tell Especially me about Stella. First. Tell me about, I want to hear about oh your gosh. baby. Oh, I love my baby so much. She's right here, by the way. I love um, it. Yeah, I love it. She's always with me. Um, yeah, I got her just at a time that I needed her most, and, and I rescued her from Houston Humane Society and had her for like seven and a half years, and we just, you know, did life together, you know, and she motivates me too. Like, like you said, like I can, I can hear her. She talks to me and I went through literally the exact same thing as you. Like I went to the sunset, which we would always do. And she spoke to me and, you know, she was like, you gotta, you know, I'm fine. Like you need to live your life, live, live, like live, yeah. you know, just live. And, you know, from that moment on, I was like, yeah, like I want to be, 
more positive and, you know, it, honor her, you know, yeah. honor, honor the life that you have, you know, people pass over and they're not gone. Energy is neither created or destroyed. It just transfers form. And like when you, you feel their presence and it's like, it's a motivating factor. So yeah. I can completely resonate and I, I totally get it with that. I love it. So what, what exactly moving past, uh, just getting, I want to get a little specific into the fitness part of it. What drives you? Try to be my best self and my highest self and what, what and who do I want to become and what and who that person that I want to become, what are their habits and what do they do? How can I, how can I be my best self so I can show up for the people in my life better? How can I be my best self so I can, you know, hold a candle to somebody and, and maybe light that candle and then there's a ripple effect. So I really, mm. I really try to think about who I want to be in the future and what, do the, what habits does that person have? And then slowly as you walk that journey, the journey kind of opens up for you. You can't do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. So like how, yeah. can, you, how can you implement little things that are going to make a big impact in the end? So today you're focusing, you're here in L.A. now. You're living yeah. in L.A. You're, you're focusing on the acting and the modeling. Something that I had to really kind of realize in my own journey, especially because I was I joined the Coast Guard first and had like six years of that. I felt like I was behind when I started like my acting yeah, career. And same. so I was always like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, I'm at this level, but someone else that maybe went straight to LA, you know, they've got six years on me and blah, blah, blah. And I've, I realized like, don't worry about anyone else. Don't worry about anyone else. Focus on you. And, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. And when I started to really just only focus on me and like where I'm at on my journey and also enjoying where I'm at like like you were talking about like earth is like a school and you're learning and you're growing and you're evolving but you're also here to live and enjoy mm. and so I've just been really focused on yeah working hard and doing a lot of auditions you know meeting people like so for me like I just I just trust my my path and my journey and I'm having a good time and I'm living my life and you know I meet great people and um opportunities have you know, been coming to me and, you know, that's just, it's just a part of the process and every single person has a different journey and that's the beauty of life. Like, and you just, I believe in divine timing and it's like, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. But as, as I go on, like you just got to enjoy yourself and be a good person and try to spread light and good vibes and yeah. you know, that, that's it. <laughs> no, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Right. I, I noticed like, it's like, what are we doing if we're not enjoying the path that we're taking? I yeah. mean, not every day is perfect, but, you know, there's no destination, especially, I feel like, uh, in, the, in the business of acting or, or filmmaking. It's like, you know, um, that's why I love that saying, comparison is the, is the, the thief of joy. Yeah. That, that's great. I'm going to yeah. be using that, like, all the time. Just yeah. do your focus journey. On you. Yeah, focus, focus on you. Focus on you. Do your thing and, you know. It's like, it's a co-creation, right? With, with God and the universe or whatever higher power you believe, like, you know, you're called when you're called or you feel a purpose and to do something, it wouldn't be put in your heart if it, if it wasn't meant to happen, but you have to also co-create with the, with the universe and, and take the action to do that. So, you know, stuff like what we're doing here and, yeah. and, um, you know, writing, um, you know, auditioning, whatever, whatever, whatever that is, um, you know, you kind of have to meet it halfway and then just, again, like I said, just try to enjoy yourself, you know, yeah, do yeah. The other, other hobbies that you like to do and connect with good people and, yeah, you know, preparation meets opportunity. And if I can be as prepared as possible and grounded as possible and, and ready for opportunities or create the opportunities yourself, you know, but just being, you know, being ready for those if they're, they were to come, you know. Are you writing your material as well? I've like, been working on that too. You so, should. Yeah. You should. I um, That's something I wanted to focus on actually for 2024 is to do a little bit more writing. And I have I have some ideas and um, kind of like some breakdown and outlines, but really trying to delve into, into that process as well. You know, if Hollywood isn't calling you, you know, create it, make it. Yeah. And, and, and they'll call you eventually. Yeah, so. absolutely. I, I just, I finished like a, it was initially going to to be a feature, but the, I guess the distributor was kind of wanting to see it as a, as a show, as a series. So I mm. shot 
a pilot that is kind of in that realm last uh, summer, so it's in post production now. But nice. It's called Vanilla, and um, yeah, so Super it's like cool. kind of play like a counterterrorism agent. So yeah, just all those kind of roles. It's like exciting. It, it, it is exciting. Yeah, but um, female James Bond, man. I tell, I see it. I say, and you're a veteran, and, and you're you're into the fitness. I love it. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give them, especially, but for anybody, but especially a young woman who's watching this that might be like, you know, wow, I, I like her style and I like what she's doing. And what advice would you give them to get to where you have gotten to? I would say to believe in yourself and know that you have the strength and desire and courage and every single thing that you might think that you lack or you, you don't have, you have it all within you. And to nev never, ever let fear get in the way of the dynamic person that you want to be and to just go after it and believe in yourself. Because if you believe in yourself and you're not afraid to fail, you will achieve what you want to achieve. Mm, I love it. I love it. Well, Manda, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you. Thank you for it's having me. It's been a pleasure. We talked about all kinds of obstacles to get over. We talked about a young woman who joined the military, pretty much a male-dominated thing, and she excelled. She learned. She found situations sometimes that weren't the most comfortable, and she addressed them. She talked about not having fear, right? Shedding light on darkness. If you see something, say something. Don't be scared to speak out and tell your truth. So we talked about uh, uh, acting and, and coming into Hollywood and, and, and another very male-dominated industry. It seems like uh, Amanda's attracted to taking <laughs> on difficult obstacles, and that's what she's doing. But again, she does it. We talked about mental health and, and, and working out and how important it is to uh, uh to, to stay focused on your fitness and your nutrition and how that could help with not just how you look or how you uh, how you feel, but, you know, it helps with what's going on up here. So I was inspired today. I hope you were inspired. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of FYI Podcast where we're finding our inspiration and we follow it. See you next time. You should never stress about the problems you be facing. Everybody in the mud on the struggle trying to make it. Look into the mirror and you see the motivation. Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration. I'm finding inspiration, and once I get a hold of it, I'll never get complacent. Look into the mirror and you see the motivation, then you step into the world and you find your inspiration.